mean death, dying and bereavement, they're a universal experience. There's nobody, nobody alive now or ever that won't go through them. Um, but for my money, I don't think we spend nearly enough time talking about it. And I think that's very difficult for people experiencing it because it isolates them, because they're going through something enormous, this transition from, from living to dying, or a family member is going through that transition from, from living to dying, um, and they're going through their own grief and their own bereavement. And not nearly enough is said about it. And I think for something that is so universal, to be so little discussed is slightly strange. But I also think that it does isolate people who are experiencing it because they don't feel necessarily that they can share their emotions, their fears, um, their hopes and, and what they're going through. And I think that makes it harder for them than it needs to be. And I think that talking about the truth of what it is like and sharing experiences and discussing the, the, the pitfalls and the unexpected things that happen during that whole process um, is a very important thing because I think it helps and I think it helps people who are going through it. Very often when somebody is going through the process of dying or in fact their family member is going through the process of dying, for a period of time that defines their life and yet they don't even necessarily feel that it's valid to come and ask for help with it. They don't necessarily feel that they're allowed sort of say, this is very hard, what can I do to ease this pain or to ease this burden? Um, so I would like it to be widely known and widely understood that grief, bereavement, death and dying are very tough, they are very difficult, they are very difficult for everyone concerned. I don't think we should minimise that because I think to minimise that is to undermine the truth of the situation and I think I think we should be open about that and by doing so give voice to people who are going through it and therefore be able to support people going through it. So I would like people to be able to feel that they can come and they can talk about it and that they can use their GP, in, in my case, um, for two things. One is for the, 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 the skills that a GP can bring to that situation and GPs will have lots of skills in that situation. But two is as a gatekeeper because GPs will often know um, what somebody needs if it isn't just a GP that they need, if they need a counsellor, if they need a bereavement group, if they need whatever they need. But they will know what they need and where to get it or where to send that person. So I think, to be honest, we need to give people permission to talk about this, that we, we need to hear their truth, because I think sweeping this one under the carpet doesn't help and, in fact, may contribute to the difficulties and the pain they're experiencing. Everyone's going to go through this. I fail to understand why we don't discuss it more. I suppose one of the first times I gave this much thought as all well was when I experienced bereavement myself um, and I would have to say very honestly that it totally blindsided me because I had no idea from looking at other people go through it or from what I had heard just how bad it was. Um, I thought in my naivety that grief and bereavement would be tough but manageable. That would be the, what I would have thought um, and yet I would say that it completely floored me personally, that I almost felt that I was so hollowed out by grief that I actually, and I think this is probably true of a lot of people who lose somebody, that I didn't really know how to function in my life without that person in my life because they were such a sort of seminal part of my life. So I would say that I almost felt after he died that I had to sort of deconstruct and then reconstruct myself mm -hmm. because I did not actually know how I lived without him. I didn't know how I functioned without him. That was the significance of the role he played. And I didn't expect that at all. No one had ever described to me just how dreadful that would be. And I didn't expect that at all as an adult woman who was married running a business and raising children. So I had no idea how badly I was going to be affected. Um, now, I'm talking about this fine now, but it's, it's several years ago. But when I did start to speak about this, and it is no coincidence, it took me years to talk about it. But when I did start to speak about it, people came out of the woodwork to say to me, that's exactly what I felt. That's exactly what happened to me. How did we not know it was this bad? I almost felt like I had joined a club that I didn't know existed. I felt that I had become one of the bereaved and I now got it, but that I hadn't known about it beforehand. And I, I felt, as a doctor, I should have known about this, but as a human, I should have known about this too, and I didn't. And, and 
I don't know what that says about me, but I don't think I'm unusual in that. I think that that was very much a universal experience. And, and, and th there was waves of grief. Uh, people talk about the stages of, of grief being sort of, you know, the, the stereotypical anger, denial, shock, all those sorts, sorts of things. But people don't tell you things like, for example, the amount of fear you feel. You're filled with fear almost all the time because you're not sure you can actually go on or you're not sure you can actually live this life without this person in it, you're terrified. And, and grief and fear feel very similar, and, and no one ever told me that. The other things that I didn't know is, is, is that as you start to get a little bit better, as you start to kind of come to terms with your grief, I didn't realise you'd start to feel guilty. You'd start to feel guilty that you were actually moving on, and that you'd start to feel like a bad person. I didn't actually know that there were times when you didn't want to let go of your grief because it's your last connection to the dead. I, I didn't know those things and I think I should have known those things, as I say, as a doctor but also just as a human. And I think I would have been better off had I known. And I would like other people going through it to know what I now know about how bloody awful it is and how tough it is, but that there is help and there is hope and you do get beyond it. I think that's very important. But I would never ever now minimise to somebody just how awful it was or try and fudge that or hide it or pretend that it's not really that bad, because it is that bad, but there is help and there is hope.